So this morning we started with number talks. All right, and we're gonna be looking at some subtraction problems. And the students came in and sat down and I gave them three different problems to tackle using just mental math strategies. Now, I'd like to ask you, is it really two? Two tens. Two tens, and what's the value of two tens? 20. So, number talks is something that I started doing I think about three years ago, and it was something that I learned through math generation training. So I have a little whiteboard at the back of my classroom, and I write one of the problems up, and then the students sit and they have to think about the strategy that they would use to solve the problem and come up with an answer. So find your partner. Okay, I'll go ahead and start sharing the strategy you thought about. I have the students talk with each other first before they share the strategy out loud to me. You said you did adding up on the number line? No, I bet. Okay, so I did, um, I did adding up on the number line. So first I started at 89 and jumped one to make a benchmark number, and the benchmark number was 90. And I jumped two, and that, and that was 98, 92, and my answer was one. It's a dress rehearsal for them. So when I call on someone, they've already had a chance to speak. And the other reason why I like to do that is because I think that the partners learn from each other. So one partner may have a strategy that the other partner had not thought of, and they may really dig that strategy. They may think that that particular strategy is something that attracts them. So when a student has one strategy in number talks, they put up one finger like this. If they have two, three, four. And then we have students who, in addition, they'll use this, I agree with you. Or this, I intellectually disagree with you. And if I see a student who's doing the disagree, they know that I may call on them to ask them for the reason why they disagree. Because we don't want a disagreeable class. We want a class where they are disagreeing for a reason and then they can back up with that reason. Who has a different strategy? And thank you very much for revising your answer. That's how we learn from our mistakes, right? You know, several years ago, learned about number talks and I thought, hey, let me try it. So I gave myself a month. I said, I'm gonna try it for a month and really see if there was a difference in the ability of my students. And I found within a week there was. 70 equals 79, cross out the two 70s, and 20 minus nine equals 11. When these students started, I started the very first day of school. I started with a number talk. They'd never really talked about math before, but they really got into it. We kind of built it in. Now I'm doing about three to four a week, but I have found a huge difference in terms of their mental math strategies and really number fluency. Plus one to get to 89, plus <coughs> two, plus two, three. Well, I really believe that students need to know the correct terms from the get-go, that we can't you know, use baby terms or baby talk, um, that they really need to know those terms from the very beginning. Benchmark. And what benchmark was that? That was 80. 80. And let me stop for a second. Who knows another name for a benchmark number? So I use terms like subtrahen and minuend because I used to say things like the first part of the subtraction sentence and the subtracting part, and it wasn't clear in that, what is that, the minuend or the subtrahen? When we're in the subterhand and we're... As soon as I start using those correct academic terms, the students really latch on to them and they can have discourse with each other using those correct terms. And I think it helps when they're either speaking with each other or speaking with next year's teacher. And hopefully they'll take that with them as they go on in mathematics. And we're going to go ahead and um, do our next part of our math problem. 